Welcome, Kiana Brunson, the new principal at the Sunita L. Williams Elementary School. I am uh, thrilled to you know, have you on this program and also to officially welcome you to the Needham Public Schools. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for such a warm welcome. Yeah. I am excited to be here myself. So first of all, what have you been doing all summer to prepare for the new year? Well, I have been busy meeting lots of people throughout the district, both within my school community, the larger district, our senior leadership team, and department directors. I think to date, I have done about 47 one-on-ones. And Wait, you've, been meet, you've met with 40 seven different folks and formally yes for like 30 wow. minutes wow. since july so and then informally i've done, i've met a lot of people here and there because sunita williams is a community school so there are lots of different folks um in and about the community and different uh schools that use sunita as a hub for summer programs so i have inadvertently had a chance to meet with them as well sure, sure. that's right the summer programming is uh, mm -hmm. a couple of the big summer programs are there so you've met with a lot of folks well I want to hear a little bit more about what you're doing to learn about Sunita Williams. But first of all, um, you applied for this position. You were uh, one of uh, many applicants and only a couple of finalists. Um, and it was pretty clear to me from the beginning that this was the right position for you, coming from your role uh, formerly in Boston mm -hmm. at the Sumner Elementary. Yes. So tell me a little bit about that. What did you do at Sumner and, and before that? Well, I was assistant principal at the Sumner Elementary for the past two years. I had been working for the district um, for 14 school years. Uh, and as the assistant principal, I was an assistant principal of a school that was an elementary K through five, K one through five. So four year olds to 12 year olds. Mm -hmm. um, and our population is pretty similar to that of Sunita in terms of our style of learners. We had a large English language learner population as well as a large special education population where some students were in full inclusion classrooms. And then we also had students in self-contained classrooms. So that's somewhat similar to what happens at Sunita. We had about 500 or so different learners. Um, and I really enjoyed it there because it was just a place where you felt welcomed. Like you recognized that kids were learning, kids were thriving. We had an amazing team of educators um, and I felt lucky to be partnered with them. Well, I have to tell you that part of the, as you know, that very long hiring process, mm -hmm. uh, very intensive. One of the things I recall is sending a team to visit you yes. and the staff at the Sumner. And I remember uh, really clearly getting a chance to visit what um, was your office. Now, I believe your office was an expanded custodian's closet at some point or... It was a fire closet. Fire yeah. closet, okay. <laughs> um, and, you know, so goes some of our aging uh, buildings, uh, mm -hmm. both in, in, in Boston and, and even locally. Um, what I remember, though, about going in there when you took me inside and our team is you pointed out where you had books for students, you had some... Uh, uh, some toys, squish toys, and some crayons where they could relax. Those are students who were coming in who maybe needed uh, a bit of a timeout or really just a respite from mm -hmm. what was going on in the classroom. You had some low lighting, and it's not the kind of assistant principal office that uh, I remember from, you know, <laughs> back in my day. Um, tell me about that. What, what, what was that all about at the Sumner, and, and, for, and what does that mean to you? Well, it's twofold, right? We spent a lot of time at work. And I spent a lot of time in my school building and I want it to feel welcoming, just like I would welcome someone into my home. That's how I viewed my classroom. You know, I pictured it, my students like dinner guests. You wanna make sure that they have everything they need when they come in. If they need something to drink, you're gonna make sure they have that. If there's a particular, particular food they want to eat, you're gonna make sure that they have that. And that's how I staged my classroom is that I wanted to make sure that it fulfilled the needs of those learners. And my office, though it was very small, same thing, you know. Still a classroom. Still a classroom. Yeah, yeah. So they need different spaces. They needed spaces for calm down, for respite, as you mentioned, a place to reset. I had fidgets. I had art, things that they could do to channel their energy in a different way while processing with me when they were ready. Um, we had like little cubes we can sit on and read together sometimes that happened. Uh, I did a lot of restorative circles in my little office. And though it was small, it was mighty. It was a nice intimate stay space where students felt safe. Um, and they could open up and have a moment where it's not in their classroom, but a bit of private time to reset and go back to class and learn. So. It, that, that it was just uh, something that I, I really clearly remember as being really important that really helped exemplify who you are. You just said something a moment ago, and I want to make sure that folks understand because it's a newer term, restorative circles. 
um, and the assistant principal's role or the principal's role. Can you briefly explain what, what's in a restorative circle and its purpose? So restorative circles are a place to build community. Sometimes we refer to them as places to support discipline, but really it's uh, getting to know one another, relating, seeing someone and being heard and being understood is a point of the point of a restorative circle. So they can happen in large classroom settings with 22 kids as an opening circle in the morning, a closing circle in the afternoon, or they can happen in very small settings where it's just a couple of people maybe talking about something that was challenging or a point of conflict or something very sensitive, but it's really a point for relationship building and community building. And in that process, sometimes you can restore what has been harmed um, and what has not worked well. And so it's a, it's a bit of an alternative to what we might consider formal uh, discipline. You know, it's still holding students accountable mm -hmm. and also trying to build bridges and heal um, beyond just thinking about punishment, for example. Absolutely. Well, I, I, I think uh, that that concept, which is uh, growing in Needham, will certainly be something I know that you bring to Sunita Williams. So speaking of Sunita Williams, so we had this hiring process. We, we, brought you, we asked you to come on board. You <laughs> graciously accepted uh, my offer to be the, the new principal. Um, why, why Needham? Why not another opportunity somewhere else? Well, truthfully, Needham was a pleasant surprise to me at the same time that I was interviewing, I was learning Needham and I think I fell in love, not think, I did. And I, I, felt, a, I felt a connection to Sunita. Like I remember when I walked in there, I instantly felt this sense of warmth in community. And I remember my second visit, uh, Mr. Kaskak and I were walking around and I was just said, I'm like, I love it here. And I had never felt that way so instantly to a school community. I felt connected to the kids. I felt connected to the staff. It just felt like a place that I could see myself in and I could see children learn and thrive. In terms of Needham as a whole, I think this district is one welcoming, but it's a place people want to be. And that is something that I discovered through my one-to-ones People love working here. People love serving here. And I look at this work as a work of service. And I want to make sure that I'm planting myself in fertile ground for good work. Uh, and I think that's really why I chose Needham. It just felt like the right place for me. Well, we are honored and fortunate that you um, have decided to land in Needham. And in, in this place, it's in Ada Williams. Um, tell me a little bit about what have you been doing to, to learn about the community? You mentioned that you're having one-on-one -on -one conversations. Yes. The school year's beginning soon. What's, what's kind of top of, of your mind of, of what top needs of to mind. happen? <laughs> well, top of mind is like the reopening and making sure that teachers have what they need so they're ready to support kids. We're planning some professional development sessions for both our teacher leadership teams as well as our whole school. And we're also hoping to have some welcome events for our families, both our kindergarten families as well as our K-5. through We'll have two separate welcome events taking place within the next week. So I'm excited to welcome almost 100 kindergartners. Can you believe it? Yeah, we've had a lot of, <laughs> a lot of new kindergartners at Sunita Williams. And we're going to have 531 students this year. Wow. We're going to open our doors to K-5. to So that is something that I'm looking forward to. I mean, in these summer months, I've just been taking the time to really understand what makes this place so great, because that is the unifying term, that this is a great place to be. This is a great place for kids. So I think um, trying to discover that and doing some observations and learning and trying to unpack what that means. I also want my st our staff to unpack what that means, be reflective and be able to pinpoint this is what Sunita Williams is. And this is what we do here that makes us great educators, great adults and a caring environment for kids. Well, I, I think that all sounds terrific. And I think my only advice for you is to take your time and to enjoy yourself. And uh, you get this whole first year, you can always say, geez, I didn't know about that. I guess I'll learn <laughs> about that later on. Um, but this is a unique opportunity for you to really um, you know, ask as many questions as you can, learn about families and teachers and the students and the community um, as you become uh, the next leader at Sunita Williams. Kiana Brunson, welcome to the Needham Public Schools. I'm thrilled you're here and uh, best wishes for a new school year. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you.